For Chinese food, there's no place in the United States like Southern California. The breadth and depth of Chinese cooking, from old-fashioned Chinese-American to the newest regional arrival, is astonishing. Chinese food is one of the most beloved cuisines in the United States. I love it too, and I'm not alone. According to recent estimates, there's roughly 40,000 Chinese restaurants in America, more than the number of McDonald's, Burger King's, and KFC's combined, and almost all of them remain independent operations. So how did chop suey, fried rice, and kung pao chicken become so popular with Western palates? Our journey begins in L.A.'s Chinatown with UC Irvine professor Young Chen, who recently published the book called Chop Suey USA, The Story of Chinese Food in America. When Chinese immigrants first arrived during the 19th century, they worked in California's gold mines, then helped to build railroads. They settled in smaller rural communities that were the first incarnations of Chinatown. So when the first yeah. wave of Chinese came? It was the gateway for Chinese Americans. I call Chinatowns in, in those days, food towns. You know, when the immigrants came from China, right, one of the first things they missed about old days was food. And so that, that's why you have so many restaurants, so many uh, grocery stores. But Chinatown's appeal wasn't limited to the immigrant population. Non-Chinese began to appreciate its offerings. And as you can see, looking around, there was a deliberate effort to create a very sort of uh, exotic Asian oriental appearance. And the effort was to capture the tourists. So it was built to have restaurants, to, to have, have retail. That. So this is uh, very deliberate and quite successful for a long time. It really captured the imagination of Americans. The dishes served in Chinatown's restaurants catered to many different types of people. In the 19th century, what we call Chinese food in the US until the 1970s remained Cantonese for a long time. So basically, there was a lot of seafood, shark's fins, bird's nest, and a lot of shrimp. It's sea the, cucumber, sea really cucumber, weird food. Right? Yeah. Real, yeah. So th those dishes represented uh, in the minds of the Chinese and American food connoisseurs, the sort of a fine tradition of Chinese cuisine. But American diners rejected that. And they, they said, oh, yeah. But big portion dishes caught the attention of American diners at the end of the 19th century. But while Chinese food became more ubiquitous, urban Chinatowns became less significant to their original inhabitants. Chinatown was relocating to the suburbs. It became a totally different thing there. We're in Irvine in Class 302 Cafe, a venue designed to resemble a Taiwanese schoolhouse. It's part of a chain serving casual Taiwanese fare. So this is the setting of a classroom. Oh, that's what these desks are. So the menus are written in the format of uh, classroom assignment. Then you know, over there, you have uh, the lab. Postmodern Chinatowns were created by Chinese Americans over the course of the past couple of decades. These new Chinatowns are located in mostly affluent areas with good schools, high-tech industries, and a population eager to sample a range of Asian fare, Japanese, Thai, Korean, and more. Places like Class 302 reflect the changing attitudes of the residents of the new Chinatown. Take a look. Having said that you're going to do this, maybe I'm going to do it. I'm more adventurous than you are. Fish cake? You do whatever you want, sir. Well, I have to have rice hot dog, because I have no idea what it is. Taiwanese oyster is very traditional. OK, Taiwanese oyster, barbecue stinky tofu, rice hot dog. The spicy basil chicken is very good. OK, so let's start with that. We'll see how that goes. OK. In the past, restaurant owners tried very hard to tailor to the taste of Americans. The intention, if you like my food, please, I will, you're welcome. But, but yeah. if you don't, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. But we're not going to change what we're well, serving we're for non-Chinese people. To make you come. Yeah. yeah. This is a new concept. So what's the next phase of Chinese American cuisine? Young Chen thinks it's possible that more upscale Chinese restaurants will emerge. He believes they'll become successful as entrepreneurs open up establishments aimed at the fine dining crowd, the one that seems willing to pay more for so-called ethnic food. And this may help counteract the image of Chinese food as an inexpensive fast food for delivery or all-you-can-eat buffets. One thing is for sure, Chinatown will continue to change. I love stinky tofu. That's not stinky enough, though. <laughs>